all educators should be good curators. Not just that part of curation, or compiling, getting things in, but the other side of curation, which is putting things in order, putting things in a structure which it tells a story. That is the hard part. A lot of people think that curation is just a matter of plucking things, you know, selecting things all over the web and putting in in a place like your LMS. What is more important is how do you link all these resources that you have curated, whether it's from you or from, you know, other resources, how do you link them up and put up a story so that it will intrigue your students to actually go through one by one of them. A lot of time when we talk about curation, it's, you know, people think that you can just take anything and put it in your LMS and, uh, and the student will learn on their own. Unfortunately, it's not. If that is the case, then what's the point of having all these instructional design theories, all these uh, learning theories informing us how learners behave or how we behave as human um, in not only making decisions but also to learn, right? Daniel Kamen has mentioned the famous Nobel Prize winning uh, psychologist in his in several of his books. One of it is Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow. Um, if you look at supermarket, for example, the way they arrange things actually influence our choice. Uh, it frames our decision making. Actually, this is what he called as um, a focusing illusion. You know, how the supermarket purposely arrange things in certain order so that it would influence us as we walk down the aisle and all that. Or maybe when we look at the fruits in a wooden bowl as opposed to those wrapped up in plastic, we will go for the one in a wooden bowl, but even though they are the same fruit, right? These are the things that we have to learn as an educator so that when we put things or, or when you curate or curate things uh, for your learners, we need to ensure that it tells a story that would influence them to uh, learn from all the resources. Remember when you are looking for articles for them to read? Yeah, Google actually tried to limit our decision by putting things in order like one, two, three, four, five, and you will tend to go for the first one because that is so-called the highly cited one. And we don't really have time to read every single article, of course. But this is the paradox of uh, information overload. You know, we have so many things around us, we have so many resources are around us, but we limit, we narrow down our focus to only maybe 10 or 20 that uh, you know, given to us on a search engine, on any pages that we are visiting and all that. It's strange, right? When you go on Facebook, for example, your friends keep appearing on newsfeed. Those are the friends that you normally interact with. What happened to the rest of your friends? We don't really have the uh, chance to look at them. You know, these are things that happens around us without uh, us realizing. But it is the same way that influence the way we think when we learn. And your learners are doing the same thing too when they go to your pages when they go to your learning management system, for example. So you can't blame them if they don't see what you're putting up because you have never considered from their perspective. So you really have to take a bit of time to think how to arrange them, how to curate them. But we can't just put them randomly. We have to know what the learners are interested in and we try to package it nicely uh, and arrange them nicely. All is more important than the sum of the part, actually. Yes, you have a lot of parts that you want to put in into your course page and, you know, all the materials. But if you don't link them nicely, if you don't have a flow or a proper arrangement and it doesn't tell a proper story, the dots will not be connected. And when dots are not connected, everything seems to fall apart. For example, in my case, when I know these students love Marvel movies, when I arrange my things, I tend to follow that kind of theme, right? I use this, um, you know, some storylines from the Marvel stories and try to intrigue them. So you can curate resources from all over the world to create your own unique learning experience for your learners. Thank you. Okay, that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Then don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.